Hi, my name is Martha Inchley, and today I've been asked to share with you how I create my shrink art keychains. This is a fun little project that I enjoy doing, and I really hope you're going to like it too. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have my embellishments laid out on an 8.5 by 11 inch document size. When I set up my embellishments onto my page, I generally put enough embellishments onto one page for two keychains. This just allows me some extra embellishments in case I've made a mistake. When picking and placing your embellishments, keep in mind that they will shrink approximately 2.5 to 3 times smaller than the printed size. Once you have all your components chosen, you will need to alter them to accommodate the shrinkable plastic. For best results, follow the direction that comes with your package. My package required me to lighten my images by 50%. To do this, I simply selected all of my embellishments at once, and under the Embellishments menu on the right hand side, I slid my opacity slider down to 50%. As you can see, all of my embellishments have now lightened up and looked washed out. I now export my page as a JPEG. This way I can use the image to ensure that my embellishments line up perfectly when printing on both sides. To do this, I click Share on the right hand side and select the Export Pages button. I want to make sure to select only the page that I need. And to take note of where I'm saving it to. On a new page, I inserted my JPEG into the background. To do this, click on Background Papers, Custom, and select the JPEG. As you can see, my embellishments are there, but I can't move or alter them. On this keychain, I decided to add photographs, so I added them in at this point, making sure to change their opacity to 50% as well. I simply selected the photo and changed the opacity slide to 50%. This page is now complete and ready to be exported for printing. To create the backside, I once again inserted my JPEG into the background of a brand new page. Background Papers, Custom, and select the JPEG. This time, however, I selected the Mirror button at the bottom of the menu. As you can see, all my embellishments are now backwards, and when printed, they will be in the same position of the ones printed on the front of the sheet. Because there are words in my embellishments, I need to make a few corrections before printing my page. Remember, my embellishments are only a background, so I can't simply remove them or alter them. To correct the heart, I went back to my original page. I selected both of my heart embellishments and copied them. Edit, copy. I then returned to my backwards page and pasted them in. Edit, paste. Since the opacity was changed on my original page, I'm able to see through my embellishments and move them into their exact positions. To eliminate the backwards hearts, I simply covered them with a white square punch. To send the punch to the back, I used the layers icon at the top and selected Send to Back. As you can see, my backwards heart is now gone. I also used white punches to cover up any embellishments that I didn't want to be printed on both sides. To finish up, I once again added in my photos. Here is my digital file printed out onto the plastic. As you can see, it's printed on both sides. And to achieve this, I simply printed one image out onto one side of the sheet, flipped it over, and printed my second image onto the second side of the sheet. 
When it comes to cutting out your embellishments, you're going to need your paper snips. Our conventional paper trimmers won't cut through this plastic. Also, when you're cutting out your embellishment, focus on one side of the sheet only, and I'm going to show you why. Here I have one of my embellishments cut out for you. Just going to zoom in here so you get a better look. As you can see, it's cut out nice and clean. When I flip it out, flip it over though, you're going to notice, and hopefully you can see this, that there's a little bit of a white border around some of my edges. This is just because it didn't line up perfectly when it was printed out. But that's okay because all you simply need to do is take your paper snips and trim that off. And it won't make much of a difference when it comes to our image. A few other tips that I want to show you when it comes to your embellishments. Uh, the corners of your embellishments are sharp as is and when you shrink them they're going to become thicker. So you're going to want to round those off and to round those off you can just simply use your corner rounder punch and punch them off. If you want to hang your embellishment you're going to want to put in a hole before you shrink it. I just simply used my 1 8 hole punch and you're want, going to want to keep your hole punch close to the edge because when you shrink it this edge is going to become even thicker and you're going to want to make sure it's close to the edge so that you're able to get your jump ring into it. Now that we have our embellishments all prepared it's time to shrink them. I use my toaster oven to shrink my embellishments as it's small and compact and easier to use with, when dealing with such small items. Place your embellishment on a piece of parchment paper and insert it to, into your hot toaster oven. You're going to see your embellishment curl up and move around and possibly even flip over, but that's okay. When your embellishment lays flat again, it's done and ready to be taken out of the oven. If you want to manipulate your embellishment, maybe give it a little curl or twist. Now is the time to do it, but you need to act quickly as it, it will harden in just a few seconds from coming out of the oven. Here are our completed embellishments. As you can see, they're quite a bit smaller and they've darkened up quite a bit. A few other components that you will need are some rings for your keychain and some spare change to hang your embellishment. I'd like to have on hand a small file just in case there's any sharp edges on my embellishments. I have a couple of different little pliers that I use to help me with my rings and the chain. And I have a little cutter that helps me cut up the chain. I absolutely love how My Digital Studio has so many different downloads that makes the possibilities endless. Thank you for joining me today and I can't wait to see what you create with My Digital Studio and Shrink Plastic.